History recalls great art from Michelangelo's David to Daniel Chester French's Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. But in the heart of the Rocky Mountains, there's a new effort to create a renaissance in marble by a sculptor named Francisco. What in the last hundred years was a significant piece of art? What really made you say, wow? When you look back in the last hundred years, there was no great art except for Mount Rushmore. And the only things that really make you say wow in our country are probably some of the architectural achievements. You know, you look at the Twin Towers, they were great. The, the uh, uh, Empire State Building, the Golden Gate Bridge, things like that, you can step back and say, that's the wow factor right there. When you need to have an art critic step in and tell you what the piece of art is, it has failed to communicate to the average person. Great art doesn't need interpretation. You look at it, your jaw drops, and you say, wow. I mean, you look at the Sistine ceiling, you can look up and say, wow. I mean, there is no need for other interpretation. When we relate to another person, we look, we read, we have body language, we see things subconsciously, and that's the language that can be translated through art, because art doesn't really speak verbally. So it has to have subtle symbolisms, it has to have uh, a language that communicates to the viewer, and that's where modern art, a lot of it just fails because it doesn't communicate. This quarry that this block of marble came from is the same quarry where the block for the Tomb for the Unknown Soldiers and the Lincoln Memorial came from. This marble is rated as one of the best, if not the best, in the whole world. This rivals the best Italian grade marble. The quarry was closed for about 50 years, and that's where I got the other block of marble for the Pot de Deux sculpture, and that was a 12-ton block. Now, this one being a 21-ton block, I had certain parameters and, and grain necessities to make the sculpture even possible, and it took them over three months just to locate this one piece of marble because of its demanding qualities. It had to be pure enough to where the block looked white and beautiful for her face. It had to be strong enough to project all the way across for the piano to displace five tons of weight. That will be on three small legs. Marble has its strength by staying in a mass. Once you break the piece of marble off, it's, it's hard in its mass and its form when it's solid. You can't even put your thumbnail into it. But once it's broken off from the mass, uh, then it becomes fragile. It can almost crumble into sugar. Michelangelo believed his philosophy on sculpture was that you complete the sculpture and it should be strong enough that once the sculpture is complete, like the Pieta, that it could be rolled down a hill and not be broken. It's obvious Francisco has learned from the triumphs and mistakes of the classical sculptors, but he's also developed his own thoughts and approach to the process. My theory is that if I create the perfect eye, that gives me the right mathematics to create a nose, to the other eye, to the relationship to the mouth and so forth. And once I've created a perfect head, it is the right mathematics for the rest of the body. An engineer the other day asked me, how do I do this? Where are my calipers? And my calipers right here. This baby is nine inches. And that thing just works all across that sculpture like you wouldn't believe. It is so perfect from, from here to here, to here to here, to the front of the nipples and so forth. It just, you wouldn't believe how perfect the hand's calculations are. But most of this sculpture, too, if I don't measure it by hand, it's a visual or a spatial mathematics. I see it, and if it's not right, well, then I cut it in. But that's the trick on marble. You never want to cut too much because then you make your sculpture all of a sudden from a life-size sculpture, it gets down to a little tiny figurine.
Even with the modern tools and techniques that he employs, Francisco has worked 1,600 hours to complete the American woman. First of all, when I attack the stone, usually it's with all sorts of different chisels that leave different kind of marks through the chiseling. Um, to get it to the next phase, then I use high-speed grinders with tungsten carbide bits that then in turn get rid of the chisel marks and expose the quality of the marble so I can see if there's uh, discolorations as there is different veining and, and so forth. And when it's chewed up with the chisels, a lot of times you can't see that, so that's the beauty of some of these modern tools. Chisel it, get rid of some of the material, and then come back with this tool and finer degrees of tools to, uh, to show and expose the, the quality of the marble. This one here will leave more severe marks in the marble, and then I'll come back with a high-speed grinder on this Dremel, which has got a finer cutting tool, and that gets rid of the other marks and in turn it gets it smoother and smoother and smoother to I, so where I can get it to the point where I need to sand it. Mm -hmm. 